All right, I wanted to install the uh, Daymaker uh, LED fog lights on my 2017 Ultra Limited. Uh, I did not, however, want to install it the normal way, which is you take this off, you buy the, uh, the harness kit, and it plugs in up there, and then simply, simply comes on with, with these guys right here with the, uh, with the passing lamps. Um, I wanted to be able to control them uh, independently. So it was kind of difficult to find information to how to use the factory um, wiring to be able to do that, but uh, um, I did figure it out. And we use this middle switch right here. This is the, uh, this bike came stock with this switch and two blanks. Um, this uh, works the, uh, the passing lights, obviously. And now this works the fog lights. This is the cool flow, cool flow fan I also installed. So I just show you how it works. Go like that. I've just got my headlight right now. Go ahead and uh, there's your auxiliary lights. And then I turn on the, uh, the fog lights. And here it is uh, all lit up. And I'll go ahead and turn those off. And kind of show you the finished installation right there. I think they look pretty good. My main motivation was more visibility. And when I saw a bike coming down the road with these on them, something similar, whatever, uh, it looked pretty bad. And I wanted it. So that's it. I'm not really so much into how well they help light up the road or anything. I don't do that much night riding. But nice to have. When I get out there and uh, I get stuck at night. So there we go. I'm going to go ahead and take the side panel off and we'll talk a little bit about the, the parts I used and, uh, and how I wired it. Be back. Okay, so I wanted to use the, the switch position here. There was just, a, again, there was just a blank here and a blank here. Um, and uh, I found uh, the part number uh, for the switch, and I bought that switch. And I'll, I'll show you in subsequent uh, some pictures I took of how you change that, um, but, but, uh, or how you install it. It's um, really easy. Um, and I, I had to figure out what this powers. Um, and it powers a lead that comes, this is the, the left side panel right here. And it powers a lead that comes in this connector right here. And I'll show detailed pictures later. Um, so before this install, this just had a rubber, rubber plug right here instead of this. This is the, uh, the plug that, that I bought and installed. This is the end of the harness, the fog light harness that you buy for your bike. Um, so you have to get this power um, up to wherever your connection point is uh, for the fog lights. Um, so to do that, you need to um, remove obviously the side panel, the seat, um, and the fuel tank. And if you haven't removed your fuel tank, I'm here to tell you it's one of the easiest operations of, of the whole project. Um, removing the tank, it's uh, four bolts. You've got two on each side of the steering head of the frame underneath these rubber caps right here. Um, you've got two here that hold it in. You've got a bolt that holds the base of this in, and you've got an Allen bolt right here. And this lifts off. Um, you pull the main connector, and it kind of sets back. You know, you set it back here uh, on, on towels. Um, the uh, tank uh, is then ready to come out. You just have to remove the fuel line, put the towel down, down here. And this is just a quick disconnect. It's the easiest thing in the world. And psh, you take the tank off, set it down on the towel, and that's going to expose your what I call the race, which is, a, and again, there'll be pictures later. Um, but that race it has a plastic cover. Carefully remove one side. That's how I do it. And then it comes off. And then you go ahead and you route your cable, that, that auxiliary fog light cable, back up through here. Uh, sorry, i got to keep the camera where I'm pointing at. And then up the race, out up here, to however you want to um, install it. Now the way I installed them, go around here, was I brought 
that harness, which you can see right here. So it comes along behind this, these cables and stuff right here, and then I had to extend it. So I cut off the two connectors that connect to the fog lights, and then it kind of comes down in here. Sorry if you can't see this too well, but it comes down the frame right here, and then it goes into here, which is the base, this plastic cover. Don't, don't try to remove this. The, uh, the, the glued in brass uh, nuts just spin. I spun one of them, I said, forget this. You can actually just kind of pull this away. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it pulls away enough to put the wires in there. And then on the fog light install, installed it here. I got a straight edge, aimed it over here, made a little mark, and I drilled, I, I forget what size it is, but it was a real good fit for the wire. Um, and, uh, and then I used a, a straight edge with a piece of tape on it to make the wire go down here away from the radiator. Sort of pulled it out the bottom of this cover, worked it on over. Um, the left fog light, I had to lengthen the lead on it by about, I think about a foot. And it does the same thing. Goes through here, underneath this cover, and comes out here. And then it goes up inside of here and is wire tied across the back of this frame and on over into the other housing. So that's where I made, made my connections. And uh, it's clean, it all works good. Um, so I'll show you some more uh, pictures of it, uh, you know, while I was doing it. Okay, first of all, I want to show you the stuff that I used. Obviously, the, uh, the fog light kit, there's the part number on there. Um, and then this is all bike specific. This is again for the 2017 Ultra Limited. Uh, these are the mounts that you have to buy. And this is the wire harness. And again, on the wire harness, um, you're going to extend it. Um, I think I extended it about, the power leads about 20 inches, something like that. But anyway, that'll depend on, on, on your application. Um, this is the switch that goes into the housing from Harley. There's the part number. This is the uh, Molex MX150 um, socket connector, in other words, female. Um, that connects uh, down in the, the left panel over here. Connecting the power leads to this auxiliary connector. And just so you know, the, there, there's a ground in here. There's this the middle switch position that we're using. The two other positions are for if you install the uh, optional um, accessory thing, which will put an accessory button here and here. Um, and actually, if you want to spend the 135 bucks on that, it connects over on the right panel, um, and it also will plug in to this connector and give you stubbed out wires, and you could you could go that way. Um, I didn't. I'm never going to have any need for any more switches over there, um, so I opted to save the money and just make my own plug on the end there. Um, so that is that housing right there that you're going to need. Um, and then uh, you're going to need uh, two of the terminals. Um, if you can solder them or you can crimp them. I opted to crimp. Um, the, uh, I bought a uh, fairly inexpensive crimping tool that got great reviews. Uh, there's a big debate about using those versus the proper ones. Um, most people will agree if you're only going to crimp a few here and there in your lifetime, there's no point in going out and spending a ton of money on, on a factory Molex. A crimper and you'll see my crimps. They're actually the first two crimps I did in my life and they came out great um, So anyway, you're gonna need two of those at a minimum um, You should buy more if you're gonna crimp them so that you can practice and, unless you're experienced at that and then uh, The last thing you're gonna need is you're gonna need two of these seal pins and These seal off the two pins from that four-way connector um, That you're not gonna use um, they just plug in like a pin and then you in and, and then you break them off and that and that seals it off and that is uh, pretty much the parts that you need to get. You will need some, some more hookup wire, and you'll need uh, 
Uh, you'll need that uh, long piece of shrink wrap to come down here. Um, uh, not sure what else. There'll, there'll be some other stuff. Here's the uh, crimpers that I bought, bought on Amazon. They actually get like four and a half stars. Uh, and I'm here to tell you that it worked great. Um, now, alternatively to buying the parts from Harley, if you sometimes buy stuff from Electronics Warehouse, I buy stuff from DigiKey. I also ordered them. Here is the, uh, the part numbers from DigiKey. Um, this is the uh, Molex MX150 female connector. Right there. So I've got a spare. Um, and you just insert, once you've crimped them on, don't take any of the back off. Um, they just slide forward and they, and they crimp in, they, they uh, snap in right there and, and works great. This, this front connector, you have to push it in and snap it back. Um, here are the uh, terminals from DigiKey. There you can see them right there, their part numbers. And here are the sealing pins for the blank holes you don't use from DigiKey. This, uh, these, um, all this stuff right here from DigiKey was like uh, $3 um, and some change. Uh, exactly, I mean, it was just a little over $3. The shipping was 10 bucks. Um, but I wasn't sure I was going to get stuff by the weekend, so I picked up, I ordered both, so just so I had an extra, it was so cheap. Um, now, the Harley one, um, just for the two ceiling pins and the, and, the, and the housing, this and this, it cost me almost $10, it was like nine bucks, um, and that was without the terminals. So I think at the end of the day, it's about the same price, um, whether you go from DigiKey or the dealer, but I'll, but you're going to need some long uh, shrink wrap. You're going to need some hookup wire. You may need some other things. So it might be cheaper for you to go to DigiKey or some other electronics warehouse and get those things. So I think that uh, other than me showing you the photos of, uh, of the installation um, in detail, which there's not a lot, but hopefully it'll answer the questions that I had. And I'm sure that you've had the same questions. So thank you very much for watching. Appreciate, uh, appreciate you taking the time and I hope this helps. See ya. When installing this switch, um, you'll see in the pictures that the, the first switch I did, which was this one, um, I thought you had to take off the, the top housing of the switch, which is actually very easy to do. Um, but when I installed this switch, I realized you don't have to do that. You just have to pull out the little metal tab, which you'll see in the picture. Uh, you just pull out the little keeper uh, and then and then pull the blank out, push the switch in, and slide the little keeper back in. Really easy. And to get this switch uh, assembly out of here, you only have to remove uh, this bolt here. Same one on the other side. Uh, turn your handlebars to wherever it's best for you, usually a little bit to the right. And then put a towel here and to protect it. And this thing will come really loose. It just slides out from under here. And there's two uh, torques, um, one here and one here. And you just kind of get on your knee, get down here and take, it was really simple. A lot of people say it's, it's kind of hard, but it was, it was pretty simple for me. That's how you pull that out of there. And I wanted to tell you about how you only have to slide that metal tab out there and not take the, uh, the top cap off.